Hello and welcome to the first video in a series of videos for the A-Level Computer Science Specification. My name's John and I'm a tutor of Computer Science from Oldham Sixth Form College and a number of students have asked me to put together a few videos to help them in their revision. This is the first video and we'll be looking at hardware and communication. So let's have a look. So the first thing we need to do is look at this diagram. And this is a very popular diagram. This is the von Neumann architecture. It was named after John von Neumann, who's a famous computer scientist. The diagram represents modern CPUs. A CPU is a central processing unit, and it's sometimes referred to as the brain of the computer. Its job is to carry out the instructions of a computer program. It performs basic arithmetical, logical, and input output operations of the computer. Looking at this diagram, in your exam, you need to make sure that you can list all of the different components of the von Neumann architecture. If you're asked to draw this diagram, you need to make sure that you can draw it using the shapes on this diagram. Now when we talk about input devices, we're talking about anything that can add data or information into our system. Some examples of this include a keyboard, a graphics tablet, or even just a mouse. Now when we talk about output devices, we're talking about once the data has been processed by the CPU. And usually we need to display this data on a screen or a visual display unit, a printer, or even a braille terminal. Next, we need to talk about memory. There are two types of storage in memory, primary storage and secondary storage. RAM and cache are both primary storage devices. They're very fast compared to secondary storage. However, they are also what we class as volatile, which is temporary. When the power of the computer is switched off, all the data is lost on the storage devices. Now, when you're running programs, the program is stored in secondary storage and we have to move the data for that program into RAM and cache for running our programs. So secondary storage can be a device that's used to store our data for a longer period of time. Some examples of this include CDs, magnetic tapes, hard disk drives or solid state drives. Like I said before, this is useful for storing things for a long period of time because we know that our primary storage is volatile. Secondary storage is non-volatile, meaning that when we turn our computer off, that data is going to be stored. Hopefully now you're piecing together that the data basically goes from the computer's RAM once it's been processed or it needs processing and once it needs saving, it gets put back in mass storage. Now let's talk about the components actually inside the CPU. The first one we've got inside the CPU is the arithmetic logic unit or the ALU. Now another exam tip here is to make sure that you express the ALU as the arithmetic logic unit. What does the ALU actually do? It does all the calculations of the whole system. It allows for decision making, to happen and it does this by manipulating the data and there's a couple of different ways that this is done and the first way is where it gets its name from it does arithmetic operations so for example adding binary numbers together it also does logical comparisons such as and or or not then the result of these calculations are stored in the accumulator which is a special register that we'll talk about later. The next step is understanding what registers actually are. Registers are small, fast access, temporary storage holders in memory. There are a couple of different types of registers that we need to discuss. The first one is the program counter. Now the program counter is very important. It tells us where to start off in our program. It keeps a check on where the next instruction is in main memory. It stores instructions in order. It tells the processor, or more precisely the control unit, where the next instruction is that needs executing. 
After an instruction has been executed, the program counter will increase or increment by one. And this means that everything is kept in order. Next on the list is the memory address register. Now this will hold or stores the address of the next instruction that needs to be executed by the processor. Now this is all about addresses. So addresses are stored so that the processor knows where in main memory to look for the instruction. So the address is stored in the memory address register, but the data at that memory address needs to be stored in the memory data register. And that's what it's for. Next up is the current instruction register. This essentially holds the instruction that is currently being executed. Finally, we have the accumulator. The accumulator is a register that is stored in the arithmetic logic unit. The accumulator is the only register that is known as a special purpose register. The other registers that we've discussed are all called general purpose registers. The accumulator's job is to store any values that are needed for any calculations that are carried out by the arithmetic logic unit. So finally, the control unit, sometimes it's called the clock. It manages the fetch, decode, execute cycle. It fetches each instruction in sequence, then it decodes the instruction and synchronizes it. It'll send control signals and that directs the operation of the processor. It'll tell the computer's memory, arithmetic logic unit, input and output devices, and how to respond to program instructions. So basically, the control unit is responsible for how instructions are executed. And there we go. That's our first video on the fetch, decode, execute cycle. In the next video, we're going to talk about the fetch, decode, execute cycle again. But this time, I'm going to show you a program that adds two numbers together and you'll be able to see exactly what the CPU is doing at every step along the way.